all right friends welcome back and now let's understand our very interesting uh, database which is elastic cache it is an in memory database it is an in memory database so let's understand what is in memory first so whenever you talk about a computer okay uh, it it works like this so you will have your cpu then that cpu will have a cache memory then you will have your ram and then you will have your hard disk so a lot of memory uh, is there at a ram level also which we are not aware of but take for example when we whenever we open a word document uh, there are certain actions which are done through random access memory which is ram and then eventually some are there at the hard disk level so for example initially when you retrieve a document it goes through the hard disk if you save anything in your word document it gets saved into the hard disk uh, so all that stuff is done on the hard disk level but opening a document uh, sometimes you get uh, like your application gets crashed then what it says would you like to open the temporary document that is stored in your ram if you're scrolling through that document that is all uh, being actioned through your ram you're copying and pasting the stuff is ha happening at a ram level so this is your in memory it is not big enough but it is really fast so your retrieval time uh, whatever you want to do uh, if it is in memory it would be faster because obviously that is closer to your CPU and way faster. So in memory caching is a fast data storage layer that temporarily stores frequently accessed data in volatile memory. Very important. I missed this volatile in memory uh, database, wherever you talk about it, it's volatile. You can't store something forever in this kind of uh, databases, but it's more about uh, quickly grabbing something from the cache memory and retrieving it and it reduces the burden on the hard disk and you need not to go to the hard disk again and again so this is uh, how aws explains elastic cache it is a caching service built to deliver real-time performance for real-time applications so you can see that there is a cache and then there's ephemeral data store we discussed about the meaning of ephemeral short-lived transient okay so that kind of a memory so this whole elastic cache is a wrapper on top of two different uh, in memory database uh, databases in the market redis and memcache and these are some features microsecond speed fully managed high availability security fully compatible with redis and memcache and cost effective and then it could integrate with all the other aws services it stores frequently used data so this is all we have discussed uh, but to talk about what AWS says about Elastic Cache, it is a fully managed Redis and Memcached compatible service delivering real-time cost-optimized performance for modern applications. Elastic Cache scales to hundreds of millions of operations per second with microsecond response time, guys, and offers enterprise-grade security and reliability. So this is how AWS defines uh, this particular service. So let's do a quick comparison because it helps us set some context. So let's take a traditional database, a RDMS, relational database and Elastic Cache. Data storage, the difference is it is in primarily in RAM and it is stored on disk. Data structure, key value, limited support for complex data structure. Okay. This is for quick access, guys. You can't have relational databases sitting on your RAM. Your RAM has very limited memory and that too ephemeral in nature. Uh, on the right side, it can support complex queries. Persistence. Often considered ephemeral data can be lost if cache node restarts. So if you restart your PC, a lot of cache which is which was stored, you might be not be able to retrieve any of it. But here you have durability, you have persistence on the right. Caching frequently access data to reduce latency. Storing and managing core application data. So in your RDBMS, you will always have your core data. Elastic Cache is all about... Uh, uh, for example, if, if there is a website and uh, you want to store the user session for some time, for example, if the user uh, goes for a quick walk and comes back after 10 minutes, it, uh, he or she need not to log in again, right? So for that 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you want the in-memory database to store the session. All those kind of operations can be done using in-memory database query language simple key based uh, operations are there here you need to use sql so what and when should i cache very important question 
फैक्टर्स टू कंसिडर फॉर कैशिंग सब द फर्स्ट एंड द फोरमोस्ट इट स्पीड एंड एक्सपेंस यू नीड टू रिट्रीव एंड स्टोर द डेटा रिट्रीव द डेटा फ्रॉम कैश ए वैन इट इज टू स्लो टू रिट्रीव इट फ्रॉम द डेटा बेस एंड इट शुड बी रियली कॉस्टली टू रिट्रीव रिट्रीव इट फ्रॉम द डेटा बेस देन ओनली यू शुड कंसिडर सो यू शुड हैव हाई स्पीड एंड लो एक्सपेंस वेन इट कम्स टू रिट्रीविंग द डेटा फ्रॉम इन मेमोरी कंपेयर टू योर डेटा बेस and then data and access pattern understand the nature of the data and how it is accessed caching is effectively for relatively static data that frequently access such as personal profiles on social media all this kind of data is generally static in nature and that's why that could be uh, stored in memory staleness recognize that cache data is inherently stale assess your application's tolerance for stale data based on different context real time data may require no staleness okay so whatever you store here is generally static stale in nature you are need so you need to understand what level of uh, staleness you can afford when you should consider caching data retrieval from the database is slower and costlier frequent user access is needed for the data the data remains relatively static or it handles rapid changes without significant staleness issues so all these are factors to consider uh, when you are uh, opting for an in memory database avoid caching when caching offers no speed or cost advantage why to cache then when it cannot help you improve the performance and it's also burning your pockets why you should use it you should not use it data changes too rapidly rendering caching ineffective so the um, the speed at which the data is changing is so quick that it's really hard to store anything in your cache and then data is too unique for every request in that case also because we are just dealing with static kind of a data very uh, infrequent changes then obviously in this case also you need to avoid caching uh stale data consideration always treat cache data as potentially stale uh, you need to be very careful of it for example in a stock traded company the prices can you know can change every second and in those cases staleness cannot be afforded uh so you need real time numbers from the brokers to take a trade so there you shouldn't be caching at all because that could hit you badly that's not the right spot to cash anything yeah cash any value of uh, your stock price so a good use case is your gaming uh, you know your gaming leaderboard wherein all your different clients from different regions are using uh, accessing the games game console and the back end is your elastic cache for redis uh, running in memory data processing to power low latency and high concurrency application so high concurrency because a game can be played by multiple people from multiple places at uh, at multiple times and then you have to because for example there is a car race going on at run time you have to say that okay if there are 50 participants across the globe taking part in that live game uh, you need to display the leaderboard who's first who's second who's leading and all that can be done through in memory very quickly because you need fast response time and uh, yeah this is something which uh, which can be considered for as a good use case for in memory so it also enhances the user experience because in gaming the last thing you need is a lag can't afford any sort of slow performance in gaming so in all those cases uh, in memory becomes a very strong candidate to be considered so guys this brings us to the end of module 4 and uh, we have covered sql versus no sql relational database dynamo db what is a data warehouse redshift elastic cache and this uh, brings us to the end of module 4 so in the next module module 5 we will start with identity and access management and it is going to be a very exciting session because it will let you know how to create user how to manage the access and security all those kind of stuff so identity and access management a very important module guys so i hope to see you in the next module but before that you have to attempt the quiz i forgot to tell you but you have to attempt the quiz now see you in module 5 once you finish this particular module and finish the quiz see you there bye